Hello, I'm Bonnie Wells, commercial horticulture agent based in Brevard County. I work mainly with the turf grass industry. Thank you to FDAX for the mini grant funding for my project that aimed to assist Florida sod producers in protecting water quality by quantifying nutrient inputs and exports. Before we get started, I would also like to say thank you to the other collaborators, especially Dr. Brian Unruh and Dr. Alex Lindsay and the other names that you see listed here. The $60 billion turf grass industry makes significant contributions to our local economies and employment generation across the U.S. Florida ranks third in the nation for sod production and Florida sod producers are responsible for implementing BMPs to help achieve water quality standards. The BMP Sod Manual, which was first published in 2008, outlines practices producers should adopt to protect water quality and quantity and provides the annual fertilizer recommendations and guidelines. Florida sod producers view annual recommended fertilization rates as too low. That's especially true in South Florida where growing conditions allow for accelerated production cycles, meaning that they have more than one harvest annually. Additionally, um, nutrient export occurs with harvested sod because the attached soil containing bound nutrients and residual fertilizers, along with most of the plant, exit the farm upon harvest. This scenario is pretty different from other agricultural commodities where only fruit, grain, and biomass are removed during harvest. At the time of this project, one of the proposed revisions of the FDAX BMP manual stated, that in and P inputs and outputs should be balanced on a sod operation. Achieving nutrient balance requires accounting for all N and P sources entering the operation, then subtracting those that are leave the operation to achieve as close to a zero sum as practical. However, with that in mind, nutrient export exasperates the problem of low fertilizer rates and accelerated production cycles. In addition, published data quantifying nutrient export and sod production is lacking. Therefore, our project proposed to provide relevant sod production training to Florida sod producers by quantifying nutrient inputs and exports from sod slab analysis. The overall objective of this project was to assist Florida sod producers in improving their nutrient management by determining the nutrient needs, sources, and managing nutrient applications to minimize impacts on our water resources. So specifically, the three objectives were we wanted to perform a needs assessment with the Florida sod producers to determine their production practices related to nutrient management and to assess their current understanding of adjusting fertilizer rates based on type of input, nutrient inputs and exports, and the FDAX BMP enrollment process. Two, to quantify nutrient exports on sod farms across the state of Florida through sod slab and soil tissue analysis and then summarize and report information to sod producers and FDAX through trainings and or publications to promote nutrient use efficiencies, as well as provide information for inclusion into nutrient management, input and export budgets. Our expected outcomes were the adoption of practices that improve nutrient management for sod production statewide. The balancing inputs and exports will reduce the potential for environmental impairment, and improve nutrient management input export budgeting by sod producers. So the project methodology, starting with our sod survey, we used Qualtrics to develop the survey, along with the guidelines of a previously published survey that was developed by Caesar et al. in 2009. Our survey was developed to measure sod producers' current BMP practices, their understanding of adjusting fertilization rates for different nutrient sources, we questioned any input and export concerns and also what they knew of the FDAX BMP enrollment process. Collaboration with sod producers was initially requested via the Turf Grass Producers of Florida, first by email listserv in December of 2022 and subsequently by personal contact. That would be through emails and phone calls and, and some direct visits. Farms were visited in person um, and sod producers were asked to complete the survey on the day of sod slab, slab sampling, or most actually just chose to do it online at a later date. All participating producers asked to remain anonymous during the survey, so we um, assigned a number to each farm instead of their name. For sample collection and processing, samples of harvested mature sod of each available turf grass species 
were collected from participating farms. Basically, whatever they had freshly harvested in the field that was available, we sampled those. After collection, the samples, including both the turf and the soil, were mailed or hand-delivered to the University of Florida Turfgrass and Virotron Lab or the UF IFAS West Florida Research and Education Center for sample processing. Sod samples were oven dried at 70 degrees for seven days and dry weight of soil and plant material was recorded along with the surface area and soil depth of the sod sample. Subsamples of those samples of the soil and plant tissue were submitted to Waters Agricultural Lab in Georgia for soil nitrogen and phosphorus and tissue nitrate analysis. We were able to get participation from 10 sod farms across Florida. Those 10 sod farms were surveyed and sampled for sod soil and tissue analysis. That would be in Hillsborough, Osceola, Brevard, St. Lucie, St. John's, Calhoun, Okaloosa, and Bay Counties. So results for the sod survey. If you would like to see a table with the complete answers and questions for the sod survey, you can use this QR code to link to a table that I have developed for that sod survey. But in general, and to sum up some of the major points there, sod farm surveyed vary in turf grass species produced, mainly St. Augustine grass, Bermuda grass, zoysia grass, centipede grass, and bahia grass. 80% of those farm surveys indicated they were enrolled in the FDAX BMP um, program already. So when participating sod producers were asked about establishment and propagation, most reported using industry standard practices of establishing their fields, including regrowth from ribbons for St. Augustine grass, zoysia grass, and bahia grass, and also rhizomes with some zoysia grass and Bermuda grass. The centipede grass producers noted they clear cut the fields at each harvest and reestablish those fields from seed. As far as harvest practices, Harvest time on average was 10 to 12 month cycles, meaning once per year, with Bermuda grass on six month cycle, meaning twice per year, and St. Augustine grass on two farms, as much as 14 months at a time. Reported sod slab harvest thickness varied among farms, ranging from 0.25 to one inch in depth, depending on grass species. The portion of each field harvested varied by species and ranged from 64 to 100% and averaged about 81% of an acre. For fertilization practices, starting with soil testing, all farms indicated using soil tests as part of their fertilization program and submitted those soil tests on average of two times per year. Eight out of the 10 farms surveyed used Waters Lab for their soil testing. One farm reported Waypoint and another reported the University of Florida. When asked if they knew which extraction method was used, 40% of them indicated they did not know. For tissue testing, four out of the 10 farms indicated they also conducted tissue tests to determine nutrient needs on average of once per year. For those who conducted tissue testing, all reported using Waters Lab. Of those that tissue tested, only one grower provided target nutritional values. Sources and amounts of fertilizers varied greatly among farms. Similarly, application timings, both frequency and month, were variable. Granular fertilizer sources are used, and none of the producers reported using liquid fertilizers. When asked, has your fertilization changed in the past five years, all respondents indicated that they had changed. Responses included, yes, decreased due to cost. Yes, we have started using grid sampling to more accurately apply lime and nutrients. Yes, we use a lot slower release. Yes, less P applied and testing slow release nitrogen. And yes, we have lowered rates to get closer to the BMPs. So to end summarizing the sod survey is irrigation practices. These practices did vary not only among farms, but within the farm itself from seep, pivot and subsurface tile. The frequency of irrigation was based on the soil moisture or as needed, but generally ranged from twice per week in the dry season to as needed. Other producers responded with as needed according to moisture probes and visual inspection. 30% of the farms indicated that they did use reclaimed water as an irrigation source. However, only one of those claims that um, they actually got the report of what nutrient levels within that water. Next, 
for the results for the sod soil and tissue analysis, 24 sod slab samples were collected across those 10 cooperating farms. Turf grass species sampled include St. Augustine grass. We had nine of those samples, Bermuda grass four, Zoysia eight, Centipede two, and then Bahia we had just one. All samples were taken from mineral soils. Unfortunately, no farms on muck soil agreed to collaborate. Because only one sample of Bahia grass was obtained, it was not included in this report. So this table shows you the total nitrogen content um, from different grasses collected at those sod farms. So this ranged from 0.0027 to 0.066 pounds of nitrogen soil, depending on grass species produced. These values are two to six times greater than those reported um, by Caesar et al. in 2009 on sandy soils. Um, but this report was much more comprehensive with 20 to 50 samples collected from within the Lake Okeechobee watershed. So the value reported herein are more in line with the muck grown St. Augustine and Zoysia grass from the Lake Okeechobee watershed area. Centipede grass, which is you know, typically a lower input grass, had the lowest uh, total nitrogen and Bermuda grass had the highest. So this table lists the total phosphorus content and you can see the range there. And it really did depend on grass species as you would expect as well. The values are comparable to the values reported in Caesar et al 2019. Similar to total nitrogen, centipede grass had the lowest total phosphorus and Bermuda grass also had the highest. The results for sod dry weight are approximately 30% lower than those reported by Caesar et al. 2009 and are listed in Table 3 there. These differences could be attributed to the variability in sampling procedure. In the Caesar study, the investigators uniformly collected five 14 um, square inch by 1 inch deep uh, sod samples from each of the species tested. It is assumed from the methods that a golf cup cutter, which is 4.25 inches in diameter, a commonly used tool in turf grass research was used to produce that uh, size of the sample. These small samples may have had less uh, uniformity in soil depth compared to the samples in this study leading to the reported differences. And finally, for our exports of nitrogen and phosphorus, they're listed here in table four. Estimates of nitrogen and phosphorus export show variability by species of grass grown as uh, reported before. The estimates of nitrogen export range from 618 pounds of acre for centipede grass to a little over a thousand pounds per acre for Bermuda grass. Due to the higher than expected total nitrogen and the low estimates of sod weight, these numbers are considerably higher than those reported by Caesar's study. Conversely, the estimates of phosphorus export more closely align with those reported by Caesar um, in 2009. It is assumed that the greater quantities of nitrogen reside near the surface. However, this has not been elucidated on sod production fields. So in conclusion, results from this demonstration trial offer additional guidance on nitrogen and phosphorus export from harvested sod leaving the farm. These results were shared via report and a poster presentation with the Florida sod growers through the turf grass producers of Florida. Um, and currently I'm seeking additional opportunities to share these results with our Florida sod producers. The variability observed and as noted in the Caesar et al 2009 report suggests that additional work remains needed in this area. Specifically, nitrogen and phosphorus sinks remain yet to be determined. Additionally, the influence of soil depth on harvest export of nitrogen and phosphorus needs some further exploration, leaving a couple of key questions. Does shallower cut sod result in less nitrogen and phosphorus export? And are nutrients concentrated near the surface? Thanks again to FDAX for providing the funding for this mini grant project, as well as to the collaborators that you see listed there, especially Dr. Brian Unruh and Dr. AJ Lindsay. If you have questions, you can reach me preferably by email at bcwells at ufl.edu or by my office phone at 321-633-1702. Thank you.